welcome back to my channel. My name is Ali if you're new here and I'm so excited for today's video because we are talking about all of my statistics from 2022 and my reading goals for 2023. So let's start, just hop right into it with my stats from 2022. Um, I'm also going to apologize in advance if I mess up the years and say 2023 or 2022 out of order or in the wrong spot. These videos get confusing when you're talking about two different years that are very similar. So just putting that out there to begin with. Um, I've got lots of stats for you. I'm a big stats fan. I have my laptop here, so it's going to be our handy dandy tool. So also if I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. Also, one more disclaimer for this video. I am a little bit sick. So if my voice sounds weird, just ignore that. And my cats are in here, both of them. And so if you hear like jingles or chirping or cat noises, just ignore that as well. <laughs> okay, so for starters, let's pull up my Goodreads or my story graph. Okay, in 2022, I read 116 books. That is by far the most books I've ever read in a year. And it was just a very solid reading year for me. I'm so excited to move into 2023 and see what is in store for me then. Um, according to Storygraph, I read 19,897 pages and listened to about 570 hours of audiobooks. The first book that I read this year was November 9 by Colleen Hoover, and the last book that I read this year was Isn't It Romantic by Lissa K. Adams. My top genres for the year, top genre with 38 books was fantasy. The next was romance at 34 books, which is surprising, but also not because romance isn't really like my go-to category. However, I feel like I did read quite a bit of romance this year, so I'm not super surprised. And then at 30 books, um, young adult, 24 books was contemporary, and 21 books was mystery. I feel like in 2023, my thought process is that it's going to lean more towards mystery and fantasy. So we'll see in a year from now if that's actually what I ended up reading, but I feel like those are going to be my like two top genres. So the least amount of time that it took me to read a book was one day. And the most amount of time that it took me to read a book was 49 days. And that was for a personal development book that it took me a while to get through. Um, the average length of book is about 340 pages, which is about right on track and it's also my average amount of time it takes to read a book is about five days which is also right about correct my average rating for 2022 was 3.93 um i'm kind of hoping that next year it's a little bit higher i want to be a little bit more critical about the books that i'm reading i don't want to give everything a five star just because i enjoyed it and i also have realized that when i let books sit like in my memory longer the rating tends to go down a little bit. So some of these books were rated really high that I think in hindsight, I would probably lower the rating a little bit. So my statistics, statistics are not perfect. Um, I also am implement, implementing the caw pile system into next year. So that is by G from Book Roast. She's the one who started that and you can look her up um, on YouTube. She's got tons of videos. I think that the version four actually came out this week of Caw Pile. So definitely check that out if you're interested. It's a really fantastic way to go about rating your books. I did have 20 new to me five star reads. I had a few five star reads that were rereads, um, but I'll just quickly go through the new to me ones from this year. So November 9. The E-Myth Revisited, House of Sky and Breath, The Power of Discipline or No Excuses, The Stopover, Under the Whispering Door, One True Loves, Reminders of Him, The Opposite of Butterfly Hunting, We Were Dreamers, The House Across the Lake, Clockwork Princess, The Love Hypothesis, Clockwork Prince, I'm Glad My Mom Died, Love on the Brain, Verity, Friends, Lovers, and The Big Terrible Thing, Beyond the Wand, and The Poppy War. So from that, you can probably tell, generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking, if I read like a memoir, it's going to get five stars for me because it's a life story. There is one memoir that I read this year that didn't get five stars, and that was just because it, I didn't really learn anything from it, and it was pretty like rambly. Um, so I gave that one four stars, but generally speaking, for memoirs, I do give them about 
generally about a five star read. So a lot of my five star reads for this year were memoirs. I'm thinking in 2023, I might not rate my memoirs. I haven't fully made that decision yet just because it, it affects the amount of five star reads that I have in a given year. I also am not going to track my five star reads for next year that are rereads. So um, in my bullet journal for, or my reading journal for 2023, I have set up, I've set up space for 24 five star reads. So I read 20 five star reads that were new to me last year. So I'm hoping I can get around 24. If I can't, it's fine. But I just want to read books that I'm enjoying, that I love, that are going to be five star reads. And I already have two that I'm currently reading. Today's January 2nd. And I'm in the middle of two books that I already think might be five star reads. So we'll see. But yeah, those are my five star reads for 2022. I did read from 56 new to me authors, which is exciting. Um, 58 of the books that I read this year were a part of a series. I had 15 rereads and 17 DNFs. However, I started using StoryGraph in about July. So the first half of the year, my DNFs are not included in this. Um, same with there's 46 books from my personal uh, TBR my shelves that are on here but I can't fully say that that's correct because I don't know that my shelves are up to date on here. Number of books in comparison to 2021 I read 205% more books than I did last year or I guess two years ago now. Um, I read 21% more pages and I listened to 551% more but I don't think that my 2021 is tracked in audiobooks on Storygraph so that's probably really incorrect. Okay, so those are my story graph stats. And then heading over to my spreadsheet that I have for my reading. So I read 50.4% of my books through audio, which doesn't surprise me. Um, so that's 59 books. 19 of my books were paperback, which is about 16.2%. 19 of my books were ebooks, which was also 16.2%. And then 20 of my books were hardback, which is 17.1%. I read 52 books from Libby this year. And so I'm super happy about that. 63 of my books were adult, 46 of my books were young adult, four were new adult and four were middle grade. I read six, 60 books that were standalone and 57 that were a part of a series. I had 17 rereads, which is actually not what Storygraph said, but this says I have 17 rereads and 100 first time reads. A majority of my books that I read are between 300 and 400 pages, 34.5%. And then the second highest percentage was 20.7 and that's at 200 to 300 pages. So clearly I have a fear of big books. I completed five series this year and I read across 14 different genres. So that is kind of my statistics for the year for 2022. I really am happy that I read as many books as I did. I'm excited this year. My main goal is to diversify my reading between the authors that I'm reading from, the characters that I'm reading from, the genres that I'm reading from. So I'm really excited to do that. I did want to quickly highlight the best book that I read in 2022, The Poppy War. This is my favorite book of the year. I gave this five stars and I absolutely cannot wait to continue on with the series. I did get the second and third book for Christmas. So I'm really, really excited to pick that up. Um, hopefully in the next couple of months here. But yes, I really, really did enjoy this book. The Poppy War follows our main character, Rin, and she really works hard to get into this prestigious school um, to learn it's a like a military academy so she's learning combat she's learning all about her country and a lot of things that are important for becoming like a war general or anything like that um and then while she's there war breaks out and she has to leave school to be in a war so this is a very gruesome book it's very hard hitting it's hard to read it took me a long time to get through it but it was phenomenal. So I highly recommend this, but make sure you check out the trigger warnings before you do read this book. Okay, and now we're going to get into my plans for 2023. So one of my goals for 2023 is to read all of the book, book of the month books that I get for the year. Um, this last year, I think I read like two of my 
11 books that I got from book of the month. So I really want to get through those. Um, so that's my number one goal. I also have a book bingo that I'm trying to complete this year. My goal would be able to do a blackout. So fill out the entire, um, section. So I'll just quickly read you the book prompts for that. I want to read a Pulitzer Prize winning book, a debut novel, a book that made me cry, a classic, a book at the bottom of my TBR, a memoir, a book written by an author with the same initials as me, a book that I was supposed to read in school but didn't, a new to me author, the lowest rated book on my physical TBR, a sapphic romance, a book that scares me, a book that a friend recommended, a cover read, a book by a Latinx author, a book published in 2023, a book whose title begins with the last letter of the previous book that I read, a book with food on the cover or in the title, a Goodreads 2022 winner, a book with an illustrated cover, a book with a cat on the cover. I want to choose a book blindfolded. I have a memoir in here twice. I'm going to have to change that. And a book set in a different country. And then I also am tracking all of the days that I read for 2023. I'm also hoping to get through some of my series that I currently are re am reading and start some of the new series that I own the first book of. I also am planning on rating my books with the Caw Pile system. Um, and like I said, you can check out G's videos on her channel Book Roast and she's got much more elaborate um, reading information for that rating system. My reading goals for 2023, I am hoping to read 100 books. That's my Goodreads goal for this year. I want to participate in three readathons and I would like to bring you guys along with me and film and vlog the readathons. I want to read at least three classics. I've never really read a classic other than in high school when I had to, so I own a few. I'm just going to read them, get through them. I want to read from more diverse authors. I want to read at least 12 nonfiction books, so whether that's memoir, uh, personal development, business books, that type of thing. And I want to read 50% of my physical TBR. So currently I have, not entirely sure what the number is, but all of these are my physical TBR, plus some more right here. So I want to read at least half of them. I'm going to keep track of how many books that I still have to read throughout the year. Um, and we'll see how far I get into this later on. I also am hoping to not buy as many books this year. I'm not necessarily on a book buying ban, but I do want to really cut back on the books that I'm buying and hopefully kind of level out the amount of books that I have to read. My goal would be eventually, probably won't happen this year, probably will be more like next year. Um, I want to have like 20 unread books on my physical TBR so that I have a selection but I'm not overwhelmed by the amount of books that I have. So those are my goals and the reading statistics from last year, goals for this year. I'm really, really excited for my reading in 2023. I hope you guys are excited as well. Leave in a comment down below what your goals are for 2023. I'd love to hear it. And maybe I can add some of your goals to my goal list as well. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye, happy new year.